So hi everybody who's joining in. Welcome to Live at 5 every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern here in the ClayShare studio. I, Jess, do a broadcast, a little live tutorial, teach you all how to make some stuff. And uh, guess what we're making this week? Oh, that's right. We're making plates. Um, plates with GR Pottery Forms and using their new rim templates, which I love. So this is going to be a fun slab building uh, plate class. And if you've never made pottery before, you can make these. You could totally make these plates. I promise. Do you know how I can promise this? Because I used to teach an adult education program to students who'd never touched clay before. And on day one, first day ever making pottery, guess what they made? Plates. That's right. You got it. Plates. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I've always wanted to make pottery, but I have zero talent. There's no way I could do it. <laughs> you're so wrong. You can make plates. And I'm going to show you how. Also, I have like almost 300 classes on ClayShare. So you could check out hundreds of other classes too. So you can make more than just plates. Because once you make a plate, it kind of starts this ball going and you just become addicted and you can't stop making pots, right? How about you out there? Is that the same thing for you? Because I know that's how I got started once. I made one pot once and this all like, this is the, where it ended up. So here are two of GR Pottery Forms, rim templates that I use for these plate shapes. And uh, this is what they are. They're these fabulous little template shapes that have this pretty little profile that you cut into your slab and then you drape it over a little form and you make a plate. It's crazy. I love it. So we're going to do that. And what else is going on in Clayshare land? Well, we had a new class come out last week, Magic Shakers. This is a wheel throwing class. So if you want to learn how to wheel throw, you could do that and then you can make these. If you're a hand builder, you might just enjoy this because one, it's fun to watch people make pots and two, maybe you'll decide to give wheel throwing a try. All right. So we're going to we're going to switch for everybody except Instagram. We broadcast live on ClayShare's Facebook page, ClayShare.com, Vimeo.com, YouTube, and on Instagram. So there's five different places you can catch this live, but on Instagram, I can't zoom in. Uh, everywhere else, you get the lovely double camera action. Are we doing picture in picture tonight? We could do that. Maybe. You guys want picture in picture? Here, this is, this is how it works at ClayShare. You tell me what you want and I make it happen. Hey, who wants picture in picture? <laughs> All right, so we can have picture in picture. We'll do the we'll do the big screen with the overhead and we'll do the little picture in picture, the full view. So y'all can have that. You don't even have to ask. I'll just give it to you. Uh, I get it queued up. All right, thank you. You get it queued up. My technical assistant is here to help out and he's going to get it going. Hi hey, everybody watching. Hi everyone who's tuning in from India, Argentina, all over the world tonight. And I see Jane says she has a full set of dishes waiting to be bisked. Lucky you, honey. And then you're going to have a full set of dishes to glaze. Picture oh, picture and pictures happening. I love it. Kim needs to get more clay because she made the magic shakers and she's like, I need more clay. So this is a slab I rolled out on my slab roller, but you don't have to use a slab roller. You could roll it out with a rolling pin. And this was rolled out to... I would say a quarter of an inch thick, maybe a little thicker. You know, we're going to add some texture to this. So we want to go a little thick so we have plenty of material to use to add our texture with. Picture in picture, Christine sees it. I know, isn't that great? I can wave at you all <laughs> and keep working. It's like, what's going on here? It's like pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time you're making pottery. <laughs> I tell you, y'all are in for a treat tonight because I have had caffeine <laughs> recently <laughs> and you never know where things are going to go when that happens. All right, so we smoothed both sides of our slab down, compressed it, and you want to make sure if you're using something like these template forms that you have enough clay. See, and we do, right? Because it would be really sad if I had rolled out this much clay right here and this was the size I wanted because look, there's not enough clay, but luckily I'm making this one. So we're good. <laughs> Hi from Washington State. How y'all doing out there? And Julia's here from Stoke-on-Trent. Stoke Ooh, all over. 
we're going to use which rolling pin? The daisies? Do y'all want some daisy, daisy? We're going to do daisies. And we're going to roll this in. Um, so you know Sharon Hoppy and I do these rolling pins, and we're actually working on some mega pins. I don't know if I can say anything yet, Sharon. Am I allowed to tell? <laughs> I'm not supposed to tell. Never mind. You didn't hear that. But we have something in the works that is um, pretty awesome. So we're going to roll this in. And this is my daisy design. And it's just a cute little fun daisy pattern. It is. And we're going to put that in the clay. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll get crazy and go this way too. Yep, I did. Sometimes I will just roll the pattern in any way I want because it's my plate, right? Now it doesn't matter what texture you put in. You don't even have to put texture in if you don't want to. That's, that's kind of a, if you like it, do it. If you don't, don't bother. So now we can go ahead and cut our plate. We're just gonna line our template up. And I am gonna use, I know you all expect me to use my 220 Dolan clay knife. I am gonna throw you a curveball. I'm gonna use a needle tool. You, lo you love the pins. I'm glad you love the pins. And you're wa you actually made it live, Barbara. Wonderful. I'm glad you did. So we're going to go ahead and just use this needle tool. And you just drag this along. The template. And it's going to cut this exact shape. So this will be the profile of the plate that I'm going to make. So whatever template I use, that would be the profile I would get. So GR Pottery Forms has, I think, four different templates. Oh, so we have an, another person in Ontario chatting with each other. I love that. We're going to save this clay because we're going to use this for making the foot. So we're just going to scoot this off to the side here. So here's what will become our plate. And if you wanted to make a bowl, it would be a simple modification. You could totally make a bowl. Easy. Easy. So. For the small size, we use a 8 inch, and that's this one here, and that'll give us this size plate when it's finished, right here. So you can see we have this much clay, and when you look at that, you're like, oh, but the clay is bigger. It shrinks 12%, plus you have to account for the depth of the plate. But if you want to make a bowl, hey, Assistant, do you want to grab my six and a half inch circle form from over there? It'll be on the shelves where the circle forms, GR Pottery Forms live. <laughs> so I'll show you um, the mat that I'm using. This right here is just a sheet of plywood. It happens to be birch plywood, but you could use any plywood you want. And GR Pottery is the company I work with, and they make these forms right here. And they have all different shapes and sizes. They have circles, they have, just bring me the circle stack if you don't know what size, it's fine. Um, they have hexagons, which I adore, triangles, squares, rectangles, all kinds of plaque form shapes. So just about everything you can imagine. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually flip everything onto this form. So we'll drape it on top of this and that'll create the plate shape. What template is, do I have? Well, let's take a look at which one this is. I have to look at the packaging to tell you because I don't know the names of the templates by heart. This one here that I'm using is the Poppy. And I've used the Poppy already once. That is the blue plate, the blue plate special. <laughs> Couldn't help it. This blue plate right here, this is the Poppy. So that's this design. Sure. You can choose if you'd like. I might. I'll take the rest. There. That's the um, one I wanted. So if you were going to make a bowl, we're going to make a plate and drape this on. But if you wanted to make a bowl, you get the next size down and you drape them both. And we'll do bowls another night. We're not going to do bowls tonight. We're going to stick with plates. But um, I will be using just the plates. So do I use, what do I use on the plywood to seal it? I use a water-based polyurethane. Um, honestly, a simple satin finish works fine. All right, so we're just going to sit our board here. And now we'll flip it over. So I like to line up my little circle in the center. And if you have a ruler, you could measure it. 
so that you, you know, get it exactly in the center. If you look at my plates, I don't think you can really tell if they're perfectly on center or not. I think they are, but they could be a little bit off and, and you can totally get away with it. What clay is this? This is Laguna B-Mix 5. That is a mid-range stoneware without grog. So this fires to cone 5, this clay here that I'm using. And that's actually the clay that I have on this plate. So you can see that white ring. That's actually the clay body by itself. And these are Amico Celadon glazes that I'm using. It's Sky Celadon and Downpour are the two colors. Sky Celadon on the whole plate, and then just on the rim, Downpour. They're darker blue with the light blue. All right, we're gonna flip it over. This is, this is the fun part right here. Do I do anything to my GR pottery forms to seal them? I don't, but Heather, I don't let them sit too terribly long on the form. They do absorb moisture. So I try to take them off as soon as possible. For me, that's usually the next day, and I don't seem to have an issue with it. But um, if you're having problems with them shedding, you were saying, I would contact Jeff at GR Pottery Forms and let him know what's happening, and I'm sure he'll be happy to help you out. Here comes my banding wheel. That's this turntable, my shimpo. And this is how fast you make a plate. It's crazy. You take a slab. So if you're not chit-chatting like I'm doing and talking so much, you could go much faster. Just smooth out and then ready. We're just going to turn. And I'm using a red mud tool from Cheryl Mud Tools. And you just spin. And as I'm doing this, I'm just pressing down up against that form on the side until my slab touches the board, just like that. So are these marble? These are not marble. These are plywood as well that I'm working on. Same plywood that my larger board is made of. It's just cut into 12 by 12 squares. Makes it really easy to work with in the studio. And you just buy one big sheet and cut them up. Every time you try to make a bowl, you get a line between the forms. Right, so if you press really hard on the sides, you could get a line from the two forms because there is a layer. So what I have found works is you can take that blue painter's tape and you can tape them together and you, it will help reduce that. And my, my best suggestion really is to not push too hard. So the plate, the plate is basically on. I'm gonna take a sponge And now we're going to add a foot. And for a foot, I have this tool I made. Actually, on YouTube, you can watch the free tutorial right there. And it's also a free class on ClayShare. This is called a foot maker. It's a corn cob holder. Yes, that's what it is. And I show you how to make one. It's really simple. You almost don't need a class for it, but it's there. And you get to watch me use power tools, which is dangerous. So do I use power tools or just hand tools? I think I just use hand tools, which is just as dangerous. Yeah. Maybe more so. Sometimes more so, right? Because power tools, at least I'm trying to be careful with hand tools. I think I know what I'm doing, so I'm more prone to hurting myself and others. <laughs> How do I keep it centered? Well, when I put the circle down, I, did you see me use my fingers to check? I, I kind of do a, a quick adjustment to, to get it centered. I'm going to do another one, so don't worry. We'll make another plate. Maybe we'll make two more. Make a big one and a little one. Maybe we'll make a bowl. I don't know. We'll see how we see how it goes. We'll see how we do for time. So I'm just cutting a strip with my foot maker. And let's check it. I think I need another one. I don't think that's long enough. So we need to cut another strip. Do I have enough on this one? Hmm, maybe. So you could roll out another slab or cut a strip from another slab if you want to. I really just want to keep using what I've got because this clay will get wedged up and reused to make more plates and stuff. See? And then you leave it like that and it's done. No, no, no. We, we have more to do. But if you wanted to, you could. So now we're going to flip our little foot strips off the plate 
and I'm going to slip and score. So this is a serrated rib. Now if you can see there's little serrations. And we're just going to slip and score. Now I made these on ClayShareCon, that was in March. And that's all available for free. It was 12 tutorials filmed live here in the studio. And you can go and watch those anytime you want. You can watch them on tv.clayshare.com. Mm -hmm. And I have news. We're going to share the news about that, about the new new change in name. Yeah, I heard from Rich. We're, we can pull it we off can do basically it? a day. Yay. Okay, so here's the thing. A lot of you know that we are clayshare.com. That's me. And we launched last fall an OTT platform. So that's over the top platform. That's like what Netflix is. So we went ahead and invested in our own company and decided to do this for us and for you so you could have streaming videos in 4K and we could have an app. Well, with that came some changes. Instead of being clayshare.com, we went to tv.clayshare.com. It's a lot to say and it's a big mouthful. And then over on clayshare.com, which is still there, was all our resources. Well, guess what? Soon we're gonna be changing back to clayshare.com. So all the classes, you'll just go to clayshare.com, everything will be there. And then clayshareresources.com is where you're gonna find the blog, the sponsor offers, glaze recipes, and everything. Now, if you've already signed up as a member and you have the app, you do nothing. You won't have to worry about anything. It'll, it'll be easy, easy, easy. And that's gonna be coming, I think, this week. We're gonna switch it this week. By next Wednesday, I'm thinking. Uh, Rich Hopefully. and I are going to have a call tomorrow, okay. and then we'll execute it next week. Um, All right, so more news to come. But that means it'll be clayshare.com for classes. The app is still the same. Everything will still be there. And if you put in tv.clayshare.com to go somewhere, it'll direct you. It'll forward you to the correct place. So don't worry about that at all. It'll be taken care of, but it's just it's easier for us to say clayshare.com and that way the classes and everything will be there but not yet not yet so stay tuned so what I did is I made my little strip cut it out slipped and scored my plate slipped and scored my strips and then I attached them there was a bit of an overlap and I did an angled cut or a bevel cut if you prefer and now I'm just going to use my finger to smooth the seam on the inside, and I'll do the same on the outside. The width of the foot, well, this right here is about a half an inch wide, my, my foot maker, but if you make your own foot maker, you could make a bunch of them. You could make one that's a quarter inch, you could make one three eighths, you could make one a half inch, whatever you want. So you can make a whole bunch of these all different widths. It's entirely up to what you want. That's why I think making them is the best. I have a couple others that are wider and I have one that's a little narrower. All right, so this plate is basically finished. It just has to dry. I'm gonna smooth this edge right here with my sponge. So what do you all think? This is, this is easy, right? Anybody could do this. Everybody out there watching, if you've never made plates, you can do this. You can make a plate. Done. All right, so let's make another. And let's use a different form. Let's use a different shape. You bent your foot maker in a little to make it smaller. Right, and you can do that. When you make your foot maker, you can adjust it. And I guess you could adjust it as you're using it if you want to. Sure, why not, right? So if you're working and you're like, oh, this foot maker is too big, just bend it and it will it'll be easy. It won't be a problem. So let's do a big one. Let's do a big plate next and we'll use a different shape. So that GR Pottery Form template was the small template that comes in the set, and that was a mm, eight inch form. So that's what I used there. Now, I have got this piece of clay, which we're not gonna use quite yet. We're gonna sit that back here. We're gonna use this one. Magic. <laughs> so you've got the big and the littles. Uh, Charlie, thank you, honey. That's very kind of you to say. 
I've had a tiny bit of practice over my 20 years of making pots. And the, and the fact that I've done it full time for 14 years, um, you know, day in and day out, it does make a difference. But I tell you, I don't ever want anybody to be discouraged and think they can't make pottery just because they're new at it or if they've never tried it. I think it's one of those things that if you have the will, then there's a way. We're going to cut some of this off. We don't need all of this material right now. It'll just get in our way. So we're going to remove that slab. Put that over there. And we're just going to work with this one. Now this is a much bigger one. So it'll be a little more unwieldy when I go to flip it. But it's still manageable. If you don't have a GR pottery form, you can totally use something else. So I only discovered GR pottery forms, I would say, three years ago. I've been making plates like this for over 10. So there was a big seven year gap where I didn't have GR pottery forms. It's just they've made it easy to make plates this way. So you can go to your hobby or craft store and you can get wooden plaques in various shapes and you can use paper plates for your templates. And I teach classes on making plates that way for those of you who cannot get GR pottery forms, either because you know there might be out of your budget or where you live, they're just not available. I get it. You know, because I made plates without them for years and years and years. And I didn't even know they existed until Jeff reached out to me. <laughs> um, I think it was probably three years ago now. So, and it's been a great relationship. I love working with GR Pottery Forms. They make a great product. But, um, there, you know, there's lots of other options. And in quite a few of my classes, particularly the early ones, if you go back and watch, you will see I am not using GR Pottery Forms because I didn't have them yet. So I teach you how to do it without them. You have the squares. Um, and you asked about templates for the squares would be really nice. I do just use paper plates for those currently, but it would be nice to have templates too. Just because you get so many more options for patterns, right? What should we do? What should we do for a design? I did the daisy. I always am doing, oh, what about the succulents? Want to do some cactus and succulents on a plate? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to stand on the stool. Um, you know, we all know how tall I am, right? Not that tall. And you want to, when you're using rolling pins, you want to apply pressure downward to get a really good impression. So I stand up on things to get a good impression. So we're just going to press down as I roll. I'll have to move these out of the way so I don't bump them. One more. We're going to get there. There we go. So that I can make this giant plate. Ta-da! Cactus and succulents in pots. That's what we have on this pattern, on this rolling pin. And that's one of my, that's been around for a while. That's that's like an oldie but goodie, that one there. Why do they have the cutouts in the center? Yes, Christine. You know GR Pottery Forms makes the WAH system. That's their wheel system. Well, it's so you can line it up on that. And you can drape these over. So you'll have this here. You'll have your template form, right? So this goes in, the, in the, the wheel attachment part, and then you can line everything. Hold on. And then you line your stuff up like this, and they latch in. Ta-da! So that's for that WAS system that GR Pottery Forms makes. We're not using that tonight. I'll, I'll, I'll use it. We'll do it on the wheel. But tonight I wanted to do it all hand building because I know there's a lot of hand builders out there. And there's a lot of folks who don't have access to a pottery wheel. So this is the way you can make pottery at home pretty simply and easy. This is a little thicker than a quarter of an inch. And you want it to be thicker than you think because it's going to shrink. And also when you apply pressure and you put your texture in it, will thin it down too. You got your artist motif Bible book today. Do you like it, Barbara? I love that book. It's got so many great suggestions. It motivates me. All right, so we're going to cut out this giant shape. Oh, this is the poppy again. Um, we could use a different one. Let me see. Let's do this one instead. 
although I love, I think the poppy is my favorite. This one here, what's this one? This one is called the iris. We could do the iris. I haven't even opened it. It's still in its package. So GR Pottery Forms is one of our sponsors, you know, and they graciously donated the templates as a giveaway back in March. We'll, we'll get them back online for a giveaway soon, but this month we're giving away Clayscapes glazes. We're giving away four six packs of Clayscapes pottery glazes. So four lucky people are gonna get six five pound boxes of glaze. So this is gonna be nice. I'm excited for this one. This reminds me of a template that I made myself. I used to make my own and I still sometimes do from craft foam. But what I like about these is you have this rigid support that you can press your needle tool up against and you don't have to worry about kind of pressing too hard and messing up your craft foam template. The iris is the only template you didn't get. It's, it's really pretty. I, I mean, to be fair, they're all really pretty. All right, so I wanna cut my foot ring before I tear this apart, but I have all this texture on it, so I'm gonna do something a little crazy. I'm just gonna lift this whole big ring up, and then I'm gonna carefully put it back sort of around it, trying not to mess up my edge. And now I'm gonna cut my foot. So this is gonna be the foot that will go on this big one. And this is such a big plate, it's more like a charger. So we might actually need to cut two. And that's why I'm cutting a really long one because we might need two foot rings on this. Two feet. But we'll see. We'll see when we get there. So I'm gonna take my foot ring and I'm gonna just nicely sit it off to the side. But I like to roll them up to move them. If you do a really big foot ring and you don't know how to transport it or transfer it to something so you don't mess it up, you coil it like a little snake, just like this. And then you can very easily just pick up the pieces and move it just like that. So that's off to the side. Now let's see if this will release for us. Yes, nice. So I'm releasing it so it doesn't stick when we flip it because we're flipping this whole thing. What size is this rim template? The big one? Ooh, it's big. Let me measure it for you. I've got a, I've got a yardstick. Now, it's not three feet long, but it's pretty big. These guys here are 14 inches. So this is a 14 inch template. It will shrink. So you're starting with a 14 inch, but it'll probably shrink for me 12%. So it'll be about uh, 12, 12 and a half inches when it's done. And I'm gonna use the 11 inch, let me show you these. So you can get these circles in all different sizes. See, they'll stack. I'm gonna use the 11 inch. So it's gonna be big. So we're gonna line this up. So this is what we were talking about getting in the center. You, I just use my fingers and approximate the distance from the edge of the form to the edge of the clay. And when I feel like it's a center, that's about centered, then we go with that. Works really well. So Frank, you want Jeff to make templates for the nine and a half. Jeff, if you're watching, Frank, and I know lots of other people would like to have templates for the smaller ones. I've seen quite a few people ask for the smaller templates. So we're gonna flip this and this is gonna be fun because you're going to watch me move two giant boards and don't worry I do this all the time I'm used to lifting a lot of heavy things so we're going to flip it so we made a sandwich a, right and we're going to flip the whole entire thing as long as I don't hit the camera we're good <laughs> and I didn't points for me <laughs> all right so now I'm just gonna reach in here and make sure that the template, yeah, we re-released. Re okay. So there it is, upside down. Now, uh, I am not gonna be able to spin this like I spun my little one so fancily. 
So I'm going to have to do it the old school way. So let's just smooth the back, just like we did the small one. And then, again, using this red rib, and we're just going to go around that form and just press it up against the form and onto the board underneath. So it's a giant plate, right? You could throw these on the wheel if you wanted to. I used to make all my plates on the wheel. Uh, since I've discovered the GR Pottery forms and making plates this way, um, I, I don't throw plates on the wheel. I do it this way. I really, really like this way of making. For me, I just enjoy the process. So where can you buy the templates? It's grpotteryforms.com. Or Kev, did you get that? I just put up on... Look at Kevin. He's on it. Actually, I'm sending them through our partner offer page. So right. If you want to buy GR Pottery Forms, if you go through our offer page, you can save 10%. Yeah. We, and we want that. I want everybody to save as much as they can. I'm a big fan of saving. Diana, the little red rib is... This is the one rib, if I could only pick one... I, I really like my big yellow one, but the red, that would be the one I can't do without. Now, and I know you don't have to have all kinds of tools. We don't. And there's many things we can go without. And you don't have to have these ribs to make pottery. But when you have tools that make your life easier, it's nice to have them, right? Like, it's nice to be able to use things that make life simpler. All right, so here is our foot ring. I think I need to I need to bring you all back a little bit. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can adjust the overhead <laughs> without dropping the camera. Hold on, everybody. Oh, there we go. Yay! Now you can see to the edge. Okay. Slip and score, just like on the smaller plate. Nothing different. It's the exact same thing. The um, only thing we might do is we might add a second foot ring in the center because when we do plates that are this large, you could get sagging in the middle. So to prevent that, you do a double foot ring. I'm just flipping this around. And I think we will do a double on this. We have plenty. We have plenty of foot. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set this off to the side. We'll do a second one in a minute. So we're just going to line this up with the edge right here. And these are hand-built you know, they're not supposed to look like they were made in a factory. So if when you're making them, it has little quirks and characteristics and uniqueness to it, and they have an organic quality, I always encourage everybody to embrace that because these are made by people's hands, not machines. And that's what makes them so special. So they might be not perfectly in the center. That's okay. You forgot about flipping. You've been trying to lay the clay over the form, Pat. Ah, so do the flipping. Flip your clay. It'll make your life easier. And if you're doing big pieces and it's hard for you to flip the big forms, the big boards, get help. Have somebody who's around say, hey, can you come help me for a second? Will you help me and will you flip this for me so that I can make this? And, you know, a lot of times I think we're all afraid to ask for help. I'm terrible at it. Um, I'm very lucky that I have a partner in life who knows this about me and he will just step up and do things for me because he knows I have a terrible time asking for help. I'm trying to be better. I'm trying. <laughs> Is the 10% the same as the cost of shipping to the UK? I have no idea, my darling, but if you look it up, I bet you can find out. That would be nice, wouldn't it? So it offset the, that cost. I would like that very much for you. The tem templates in the ride or die rib, red rib. Exactly. The red rib is a ride or die tool, isn't it? So I'm going to make a second foot ring. And, you know, there's no rules about it has to be exactly two and three quarters inches from each side. Don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. I'm just guessing, I'm just looking at it and saying, oh, that, that looks like the size I would want in here. And I'm going to cut through both so I have a nice overlap. 
And I'm going to join this and I'm going to make this a circle right now. And it's not joined yet to the plate, but it will be soon in just a minute. The red rib, um, is that in the Amazon shop? I believe it is. It's sometimes out of stock, but almost all the clay suppliers carry these. And this is a number one. So Cheryl Mud Tools has different number system for all their sizes. And Clayscapes has a... Uh, and Clayscapes has a, sa a discount right through our sponsor page. Explore 10. Explore 10 and save. Right. Don't forget to use that. So we're going to put it here. We need to mark it so we know that's where we're going to put it. And I'm going to use... I'm going to use the biggest, look at this ridiculousness, the biggest color shaper I've got. This thing's huge, and this is its like little brother. Um, I'm just being silly. You don't need one this big. I actually use these for painting and pastels. These are not supposed to be in the pottery studio, but guess what happens? When you're a potter and you buy tools for other mediums, and you're like, oh, I'll use that the next time I'm doing some pastels and drawing. And then you're in the studio one day and you're like, taking that to the studio. And that's how that happens. So I've marked my little area that I want to slip and score. So we'll just slip and score that inner circle. Now this is supported right now because we have the form under it. So there's, there's, it's not going to collapse. The blue angels flew overhead. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen them that they've been flying with the uh, Thunderbirds. Who have they been flying, flying yeah, with? They, uh, we saw that the other night. I know the Blue Angels and Thunderbirds did a, a joint thing yeah, that's down the East Coast a couple of days ago where they were flying together. That's awesome. They, they never do. I know. That never happens, so that's a treat. So we're just lining this up, and now I'm pressing it in, and we'll smooth it out with the, with the sponge. Yeah, when it, when it, when it, what happens in the studio stays in the studio. The tools that go to the studio stay in the studio. That's exactly what happens. Um, I have a lot of uh, tools that weren't supposed to be in the clay studio. They were meant for other things. And then, you know, it's like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try this. I'm just gonna see if this works. And then that, that's it. That's the end of the, the item going anywhere except into my pottery studio, right? Like, it's mine. I've claimed it. <laughs> You're having a heat wave. <gasps> Oh no, Peggy, come to Vermont. It's not hot at all. It's not even 50 and rainy. And we're going to get snow Saturday. Snow. That's right. You heard the S word. It's happening. I did not plant my herb garden yet, and I'm so thankful because it's going to be too cold. I won't be able to plant maybe, maybe Monday. Maybe. So what size plate would I start putting on a double foot ring? This was a 14 inch diameter on the outside with an 11 inch on the inside. I would, um, this one's the eight inch. No, this is the nine and a half, the nine and a half. You can do the nine and a half with a single foot ring. When you use the GR pottery forms, if you go up to the 11, you wanna do a double. Anytime you get close to um, 10 to 11 inches, I do a double. And with the rectangle ones, if it's a really long form, like a, a 12 or 13 inch long form, I try to put a foot ring in the middle to help that span be supported. Denise just goes and gets two of everything. I love you. That's exactly right. That, so this past Christmas, we bought a set of really nice cookie cutters for making Christmas cookies in the house. They were for baking. And what ended up happening is I bought one set, went back the next day, bought a second set because I realized I needed a set for the house and I need a set for the studio. Yeah, that's exactly what happens, isn't it? <laughs> All right, so this is going to dry just like our smaller one. And if you start this, well, it's, it's five after five tonight, it's not going to be dry till tomorrow for flipping it out. So I'll cover this lightly with plastic and I'll let it set overnight and then tomorrow I will flip it over. I'll actually do a video for you all. I'll, 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 I'll do a video. We'll flip it out together tomorrow. So you'll get to see them, how that happens. Let's do one more plate and I'm just figuring out how I can move. I've got a banding wheel. <laughs> do I need, do I need anything? I need a bigger studio. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> don't ask if I need anything. <laughs> because that's the answer that's going to happen. All right, we're going to make another one because uh, maybe we'll make a bowl. What do y'all think? Should we make a bowl? You all tell me. Do you want a bowl? Let's put this slab off to the side. Put that over there. All right, I need to grab this guy. We can make a bowl. An air and a spare. Peggy, you know about my air and a spare, don't you, hon? Right here. So this one is the air. The air is here. The spare is at my pottery wheel right now. So I have, I have two. Thank you, Peggy. I have two of those because I'm always needing them and they are my favorites. Uh, what do you think? Should we make a bowl? I wasn't going to do a bowl. I was going to save that for a whole nother night, but yes, bowl, 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 bowl. Okay. I, I, I'm hard to convince to make something, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> yes, we'll make a bowl. All right, we're going to make a bowl. So we'll smooth this out on both sides. My slab is a bit bigger than the board that I have, but you know what? It's working, so we're good. We're going with it, and we're going to make a bowl. So this is how you can make a bowl from a slab of clay, which is pretty easy um, and kind of fabulous if you think about it. Do I leave the platter on the form overnight? I will, Kathy, yes. I will leave that on overnight because it really needs to sit up enough so that I can, um, so that I can remove it without it warping and, and sagging. So let's go ahead and we'll use this pattern rolling pin is based on my grandmother's um, feed cloth. So some of you might be familiar with feed cloth fabric. This is straight from a piece of feed cloth that she actually had. Um, and my family was farmers they would use those feed cloths to make aprons and tea towels and sometimes dresses. You know, they used that, that fabric for everything. I love it. And so this is called Vintage Geometric because it's a, ninth, I would say, mid-century modern era, like a 50s, 40s to 50s inspired design. Is that one there? Okay. This is kind of like the check out all the roller night bowls. What do we want to use for a bowl shape? Does anybody have preferences? Thanks, Diana. It's, it's a nice one. It really is. I think this will be a sweet bowl. This one right here, which is, let me look it up and tell you what it's called. The daisy. Oh, I should have done the daisy roller for the daisy, but you know what? It works. I know, picture in picture. We are fancy here, Drew. You missed out. You missed out on the fanciness. How you doing over there? Over in Syracuse, are you all having our weather before we get it? You get, how was your weather today? Because that's what we'll get tonight. All right, so I'm cutting out the template just like I did for the plates. Do it the exact same way. No difference. And we're going to save this clay because we're going to make a foot ring from it. Woo! Put that over there. So, bowl, right? You want to make a bowl? I want to make a bowl. Let's make a bowl. So we're going to grab, we have the 8 inch. So that'd be good, but we want a bowl, right? So we need to go a little deeper. So we can use the 5 inch. So you put your 5 inch. And then you put your eight inch. Now I have a trick to get these to, to kind of stick a little bit. And what we're gonna do, it's sunny and cold, just working and teaching third grade, right? And it's hot in the 80s there. Third graders are the devil. Third graders are tough. I've taught third grade, Kevin's taught third grade. Well, not third grade, like as a full-time teacher. I taught art. Um, and after school art enrichment programs in ceramics for third graders. And Kevin taught fly fishing and um, jousting. Both, and jousting. jousting. <laughs> yes, and I was a, a, a Girl Scout brownie troop leader for many, many years. So I tell you, lo love third grade. I don't know what happens in third grade, but something happens. 
So I got the form wet on the top and wet on the bottom and when you put them together they sort of do a friction fit. The moisture helps them kind of grab each other so they won't be sliding around. Now if you used blue painters tape you could put that here so that you wouldn't be getting a seam. Let's put this on. I've never made a bowl with this um, particular rim template. So again, line it up just like we did before, just like that. And we're going to flip it over. I've got a board over here. Third graders have a voice. That's right. Third grade, they, I think when they get to third grade, they kind of come into their own a bit. And they get their personalities, don't they? <laughs> All right, so let's flip this over. And we'll flip it over. Oh, Barbara, thank you. You're very sweet to say that. I love what I do. I really love to teach and I love to share. And, you know, you're all here with me in my studio and it's like having a bunch of friends over and that's how, that's how I am. That's how I teach. And I've um, taught all ages. You know, we're talking about third graders and teaching, being a brownie troop leader and teaching little ones. And I also taught college. So I've taught all levels. Plus I've taught retirees and adult education. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's never boring to teach. I really love it. So once we flip this over, I'm just going to use my hands to gently coax the clay down the sides. We're just going to start it that way. And I put it on my banding wheel. There we go. Is there any way to easily put a scalloped rim like that on a piece thrown on the wheel? Ah, Diane. So I'm, um, we're working with Studio Pro Bats and they sent me some templates which you use for wheel thrown pieces. And I haven't had a chance to try those. It's a little different than these, um, but I will get to them soon and we will see, we'll see. All right, so you see how I'm coaxing the clay down the side? And here's the thing, you can't tell right now, but when I unveil this tomorrow and I flip them over, you will see the texture is still here. We haven't lost the texture. In fact, you can see the texture here in this plate, so you can still see all the textures there. And it's because we're not squashing it flat, we're just smoothing it and smoothing it to it. We're not trying to crush. That's not the goal. We're not destroying that beautiful pattern. And so with the bowls, sometimes I will come in and I will go down like this, sweep down the piece. Do you all hear my chicks? I have little seven day old chicks in the studio, little baby chickens. And they're over there being very active and cute right now. The design is on the inside, right? Now, if I wanted to, I could stamp this outside. I could use a rolling pin and roll texture on the outside. You could add more texture to it if you want to. Just keep in mind, if you press really hard on the outside to do that, you could make your texture less noticeable on the inside. So we just keep spinning. I'm just going to turn the board now. And this will make like a pasta bowl, like a really nice uh, deep bowl, salad bowl, pasta bowl, or if you're me, my ice cream bowl. <laughs> this is my size ice cream bowl, five scoops of ice cream in one bowl. That sounds about right for me. There's no messing around when it comes to ice cream time in my house. No. All right, so we have our... our bowl pressed and we're going to put a foot on it just like we put a foot on our other pieces but you don't have to right and pushing hard might make the form shift and also the inside where the two forms line up if you press too hard you might get more of a line Denise you want chicks <laughs> um, have I thought of making a rocker type stamp for the outside oh you know that's a good idea you can roll the rolling pin up as a rocker so let me just so you could use a rolling pin like this 
you see how we're just pressing it in and rolling it on the side but again by pressing on the side here I'm probably going to be highlighting that line right on the inside that I'm trying to avoid highlighting but you can roll these up um, on it you could put it on the top do a little light impression there I don't like to press too hard on the edges because if you thin it down over the edge here you can get cracking um, the actual bottom will pop right off like a little circle it'll just go right off and then you'll have a hollow bottom and that's that's not what we want I've had that happen that's how come I can tell you not to do it <laughs> don't do what I have done and made you know mistakes <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. You know all, you all know that, right? So now we're going to cut our foot ring again from this piece here. We don't need as big of a foot ring as we had before because we don't have as big of a diameter. All right, everybody's coming to my house for ice cream. That's right, it'll be an ice cream social. We'll have a big ice cream party. It'll be fun. You can make ice creams, ice cream sundaes banana splits, brownie sundaes, some warm chocolate chip cookies from the oven. So let's see if this is enough. Yes, perfect. So I'm just gonna turn this over and we'll slip and score it. And this will also sit in the forms overnight. So I won't take this out until tomorrow. So y'all have to come back tomorrow to see it. <laughs> that means I have to do it tomorrow for you. <laughs> it's a good thing I finished filming that class today um, so I can work on other things for you guys. Um, what would a bowl like this sell for? Um, for me, so I think $35 for a bowl like this. If you're making a dinnerware bowl, this is larger than a single serving, this bowl here. So I would say 30 to 35 is not out of the question for just a simple bowl. You know, some people will sell them for more some for less. I like, I don't really make production pottery for sale anymore. Once in a while I'll have a sale and you all know that um, I'll put some things up and, and they'll sell. But most of the things I make now, if they're not my, my line of artwork, they're pieces that are gonna become classes and I'll just make a few for those classes and then I'm on to developing more classes because that that's where I'm at as a potter. I'm a potter who teaches people how to make pottery and I come up with new ideas and develop new classes for everybody, but um, I don't really make and go out and sell my work anymore places. I, I, can, I couldn't keep up with the demand and still run Clayshare. So that was a decision I had to make when I started this to switch my focus for a little while. I mean, not forever, right? At some point, I might come back and just be making pottery all the time and not teaching as much but right now this is what I'm doing and I'm I'm finding it so rewarding and fulfilling that I don't know I, I don't know how what will happen we all don't know what the future will bring but I'm, I'm very blessed and happy with what I do right now but anyhow I hope that answers your question <laughs> I hope that helped with how much you could sell a bowl a um, large pasta bowl medium-sized bowl I think 30 35 dollars would be fair very reasonable, actually. Everybody's talking about how much we're all eating right now. Uh, but you know, it's okay to nest and eat sometimes. So let's talk about signing. This piece has a texture on it, so it would be harder for me to do my inlay or carving. So that's when I get my own stamp. So this is a stamp I carved in the clay in reverse, and then I stamped my piece, so now it's signed. It's done. That's it. So this will need to sit overnight, covered with plastic. Remember, everything's going to get draped with plastic. And then tomorrow we'll be able to pop it out in the morning. Oh, Ella, I'm glad you found me. How do I store the forms and rims? That's a good question, Jane. I have a shelf uh, over at, uh, like, over there <laughs> on the other other side of the studio and I will stack them um, going from largest to smallest in the shape that they're in so all my circles will be stacked and my squares stacked and my rectangles and then my plaques so they're all stacked up nice and neat and then I have all my rims I keep them 
I put them back in their plastic bags, so I have two rims, a large and a small, in each little plastic bag. Let me put this back in. And I just stack them on each other, and they sit over there as well. I don't stack things on the rims because I don't want to ding my rims or chip them. So these will just sit, and I have a lot of other templates over there that I've made over the years. So I have a whole stack of templates. It's like this tall. So the JR Pottery Form templates are on the top. They're the tippy top of my template stack. And then I have some craft foam and cardboard ones and some plastic plates and bowls. Plastic plates and bowls are great for using as templates. Um, I did a unboxing and plate making class uh, a few months ago, I think now. We use plastic plates from the dollar store to make our templates. So why do we cover them with plastic? Because honestly, these would be ready to flip out in about six hours, but I'll be sleeping in six hours from now. So I won't be able to come back and flip them out. So by covering it up, it slows that drying time and I can just wait till I get up tomorrow morning and come out to the studio with a lovely cup of tea and flip everything out done. So it's, it's a, a way of working. It's part of my workflow that makes my life um, a little less crazy, right? So I cover them with plastic and I let them sit overnight. Now I'm just smoothing the rim, the back side of the rim with the sponge. And that's, that's it. A bowl, a little, a dinner plate and a charger. That's what we made. Pretty awesome, right? <laughs> All right, just can't wait to see how they come. I know, I can't wait to see them. If, you know, we see you hang your templates on hooks and pegboard. Diana, that is an awesome idea. I love the idea of hanging them on pegboard. I have the only free wall space I have right now is about two feet by two feet right there. That's all I have, or here. I suppose, I suppose they could hang here. I could just hang them on the wall back here, a whole row of them, right? I mean, that's about what I have left in the studio for wall space. It's, it's pretty packed. <laughs> uh, that's why I was saying I, I need a bigger studio because there's, there's not much room in the studio. So what time will I flip them out, John? Uh, let's, let's say noon. We're not gonna do it at our first thing in the morning. We'll say noon because after this broadcast, I do the private broadcast, which usually goes till seven, and then I have to go inside and work for a couple more hours. Um, you know, after I clean up the studio and reset that. So I go to bed about midnight and usually wake up at about six. And uh, usually in the mornings, I will try to get a little time to work on a few pieces. So we'll do it tomorrow at noon. What do you think? Come at noon, come at lunchtime, bring your lunch. You can pack, pack a bag lunch and come tomorrow at noon and we'll flip everything out. What do y'all think? Does that work? <laughs> Less crazy is better. Uh, less crazy would be better. I think we all need less crazy. I hope you all have some less crazy time in your life. All right, so that's everything, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. You know, uh, you can always see my classes on tv.clayshare.com, which soon you just put in clayshare.com and you'll get all the classes that way. And then Clayshare resources will be all of the blog and glaze recipes and sponsor offers and all kinds of stuff will be over there. So it'll be, it'll be great. Yeah, I work crazy hours. It's just how I am. I try not to, but I can't help it. <laughs> All right, everyone, let's, let's uh, adjourn for the night, and we'll meet again tomorrow at noon Eastern time, and we'll flip these out, right? And right, if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. If you're watching on the Clayshare Facebook channel, give us a like and follow so that you know, and you can hit the little bell so you can find out when we're live next. And everybody who's watching on Vimeo and Clayshare, thanks for hanging out with us. And everybody on Instagram too. All right, everyone, have a great night. I'll be back next week for another live broadcast. We'll be doing, I think we're gonna be talking about Clayscapes Glazes since they're this month's giveaway. I think we'll talk about that. Um, but next is the private broadcast for premium members. And if you're a premium member and you wanna find out more, you can go ahead and check out on clayshare.com all the information on your account, it'll tell you how to get into that private group. Night, everyone.